What I think makes this building uh, architecturally significant is that it begins to read context in a way which it's almost impossible for the buildings of Liverpool I to do. Uh, I don't mean that it reads context in a historical sense. Uh, the context in which it was built or conceived or designed um, is one in which everything around it was changing. The building that you see here on the right-hand side is uh, Page and Park's uh, Radio Merseyside, part of phase one of uh, the Grosvenor development. And on the left-hand side of the image is the scaffolding. This was taken maybe nine months ago, maybe a bit more. Um, building on the left-hand side is Howard Tompkins' uh, mixed-use building, also for Groves now. And in the distance, you can just about see um, beyond the older stuff. I think that's Glen Howell's little tower coming up there. So there was no context in that ghastly way that English heritage wreck so many other decent buildings. That is, that there wasn't an obeisance with a ski jump roof uh, from the tallest point of the building to the lowest. This is a small disease that Manchester suffers from. Um, there wasn't a mucking around with cornice lines because there were no proper cornice lines. And uh, the only thing one could call historical context here has to do with the color of the brick. Um, but uh, if I go back one, you'll notice that the brick is laid in a funny way. That is, it's stacked. Um, the message here is a little bit, um, little bit moralist for me. Um, that is, uh, it's indicating, it used to be used to indicate that it's not load-bearing, because of course, bricks stacked like that can't carry much weight more than their own. So the context for this building uh, seems to me to be something much more interesting. It, is, it has to be self-referential because there aren't... Or let me put it another way. There's the opportunity for it to be self-referential. Um, but in fact, I think that the, the thing that's contextual to me is a personal reading of Liverpool. The gable end is significantly what you see the gable end is one that is not uncommon at the end of terraced houses within the city. Um, the thing which makes it look institutional is this apparent sheet of black stone, or the sheet of <coughs> apparent stone, uh, with something that the current director really objects to, which is the name of the blue coat incised in Latin. I take that to be a rather academic joke. So the context is read here is one that addresses or is about or comes from the, a, a particular architect's reading of the city. Now that seems to me to be a proper sense of context. But it is not one, of course, that necessarily falls within that rubric of urban regeneration. It's not iconic uh, in the sense of, um, or Brian can parse icon for me. Um, it's not iconic, it's not signature, it doesn't stick funny shapes out in public. Uh, it doesn't cover itself with titanium scales um, or any other kind of scales, comes that matter. Um, it is a kind of building which, in a sense, urban regeneration does not want. That is, it's a quiet building. Now, if you're going to regenerate a city, uh, it's strange to me that I'm almost leading to a kind of logical conclusion that uh, if you want to undermine regeneration, you actually design buildings that don't particularly draw attention to themselves. That if one actually saw the whole of Liverpool I as a series of buildings cast in this mould, that in some ways this might not be acceptable to the powers that be. If Liverpool I had been uh, a series of quiet buildings, then I suspect that the jazz that you saw earlier and that somebody else will talk about would not have occurred. The interior of this building, here you can see 
the uh, gallery on the left-hand side, and then by virtues of PowerPoint, which I'm just coming to terms with, um, the, stairwell, the uh, lift well and staircase that links about 30 different levels within the building on the right-hand image. This is austerity. Um, the architects themselves talk about Miroslav Sik in, uh, at the ETH in uh, Zurich. Um, they're obviously indebted to the work of Grassi and Rossi and Ungers and so on and so forth. Um, so the interesting thing to me about urban regeneration, if what I'm saying is correct, is that it is anti-rationalist. Not anti-rational, but anti-rationalist. The consequences for that, in my terms, are that actually when one goes through an urban regeneration program, and let's not forget that urban regeneration programs are a function of the north, not of the south, um, that what is actually being required by, of architects is in general, in general, not every time, is in general the, con the construction not of an architecture which promises a better future, but one which draws attention to itself. <laughs> 